I'm going to invite you to take your Bibles or your Bible apps this morning and turn to the book of Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2 is where we're going to be today. And uh, if you don't have a Bible or a Bible app with you, that's fine. Grab one of the Bibles in the seats around you. Turn to page 1160 and you will find Ephesians chapter 2. I'm going to ask you to mark it and hold it uh, because we're, it'll take us a while to get there. Um, and by the way, if you don't have a Bible and you want a Bible, you want to read God's Word, uh, then we just invite you to take one of these. It's our gift to you because uh, we know that if you have God's Word and you read it, it will change your life. Hey, speaking of changes, let me share with you one uh, before we get into the message today that's going on a little bit with uh, one of our staff. Uh, Julie Garnis is our director of children's ministries, and she does a phenomenal job. We love having her. I, in case you didn't know, we've got about 300 plus kids on a weekend, and uh, we praise God for that. Thank God for that. And she does a phenomenal job leading that ministry. Uh, but uh, but in the process of pouring herself into the ministry, and because she's a person who has so much compassion, she uh, just loves people and wants to help people. Uh, her life got a little bit out of balance, and, uh, and, and so it was infringing on her time uh, with her family and just kind of overwhelming her. And so she's making some changes, and as her, uh, as her team is around her, and, and as I as, am her uh, boss, I think a better, better way to put it, uh, trying to help her build those boundaries back in. We've, we've asked her to make some changes uh, to protect her and to protect her family. And I'm sharing those with you because they may impact you. Like, for instance, she dropped off of uh, Facebook, and, uh, and some of you that message her and talk to her that way are, are going to miss that connection a little bit. And, uh, and she's, she's going to be uh, not going to be the one receiving the emails at Kids at Calvary. They're going to be screened by somebody else. So if you're asking questions about children's ministry, uh, great. Those will be answered perfectly and wonderfully. And if you're sending her information that's on a more, more personal note, you may want to rethink that. Uh, and then uh, the big one, uh, she's changing her phone number. And I know you're like, oh, is that drastic, is it? Yes, it is. It's that drastic. Changing her phone number. And a lot of you uh, have her phone number, and you've been used to reaching out to her. And unfortunately, there's a lot of us. And, and, uh, and like I said, she, she has trouble turning her phone off. And so uh, I just ask her to, to change her phone number. And, and here's the thing. If you love her and you care for her and you want to help her succeed long term, like I want to help her succeed long term here at Calvary uh, in ministry, not burn out and stuff like that, don't ask her for her phone number. Because I know some of you are like, oh, i got to have Julie's number because I'm her best friend. And, and here's the thing. Um, I told her she can't give her phone number out. And she hates saying no to people. And so if you come up and ask her for her phone number, she's going to have to turn you down, which is going to hurt her, and, and it's my fault. And so uh, just save her that pain and, and wait until, uh, until you have to have it at some point in time. Uh, because we want Julie to be a long-term part of the ministry team here, and so she's got to figure out how to, how to do the balance thing, how to have life that's healthy so that she can be the person that God created her to be, so that she can be the wife and the mom and, and the servant of God here at Calvary, because that's what God created her to be. That's her purpose. And uh, so th thank you for praying for her and helping her to accomplish the purpose that God has called her to. Now, uh, speaking of purpose, we're kicking off our Purpose Driven Life series today. And I hope you're excited about that. I'm excited about that. And, uh, and as we get started, I'm going to ask you this. How many of you ever use GPS on your phone or in your car? Okay, lots of hands go up, yeah. And, and how many of you uh, have, have ever had it mislead you? <laughs> yeah, isn't that amazing? I was in the Virgin Islands one time trying to find a hotel, and it took us to some ghetto, you know, someplace along the way, and it was like, ah, oh, it's not good, not good, this is not where we're supposed to be. Uh, what I found is usually you can rely on GPS, especially if you don't know where you're going, but you got to put in the correct address. Because if you put in the wrong address, is it going to take you where you want to go? No, it's not. If you program in the wrong destination, you're going to arrive at the wrong destination. And, and that's kind of how our life is. Our lives are journeys. We're on this journey, and every single one of us, uh, well, I say we have a destination in mind. Sometimes we don't. Some of us are on this journey, and we're just like, <laughs> we don't have any destination in mind. We're just driving, trying not to crash. You know, we're just like, I hope I don't get hurt. And others of us are on this journey, and we've got a destination in mind, but we really have no idea how to get there. And we're hoping that we'll get there, but we're not really sure if we're on the way or not. And, and some of us, we've got a destination in mind, and we actually know how to get there, 
But somewhere along the way, uh, we've taken a wrong turn. Either someone has led us astray or we just got off course, and, and we're really struggling to get back on track. And others of us, we, we've got the, the destination in mind. We know how to get there. Uh, in fact, we're on the way there, but suddenly we're having second thoughts about whether or not this is the right destination. And so we're going to spend some time, starting this weekend, talking about our destinations and how to get there. In other words, we're going to talk about the purpose-driven life, or what on earth am I here for? And, and what we're going to offer is some direction and some encouragement but every single one of you is going to have to decide where you're headed with your life. What is the GPS of your soul programmed to? Uh, so let's start with this, some evaluation, because we've got to evaluate and figure out who we are and where we're headed before we could even talk about making any changes to that. So um, what would you say? What has been the purpose or the destination of your life to this point? What has been the purpose or the destination of your life to this point? Uh, now, this is not a, uh, an answer that you want to share with the people around you. This is not an answer that you want to come and tell me. This is an answer that's between you and God. What is your life aiming at? What destination is programmed into your soul? Uh, do you have purpose? Because we're living in a nation that is experiencing a crisis of meaninglessness of purposelessness, of people who are wondering, what on earth am I here for? And they don't have any answers. And we see this demonstrated in so many ways. We see it demonstrated in the suicide epidemic among our young people. Teenagers and young adults, the number two killer of teenagers and young adults is suicide. Because people are, are coming to the conclusion that there's nothing to live for, there's no reason, there's no rhyme, and they have no purpose, and they go ahead and just, and just end life. It's too much pain, too much sorrow. And we see that locally as well as nationally. It doesn't stop there. You get a little bit older and you think, good, we got past that point. But then we've got this midlife crisis stuff where, where people come to the you know, middle of their life and they blow up their families because they're going, is this all there is? This isn't enough and i got to start over. i got to pursue something. i got to do something different. And, and, it, and it tears families apart. We get people at the end of their life where they're, they're frustrated and they're, they're still trying to figure it out. So what I want to do is just encourage you and God to have a conversation about your life. And I'm going to mention some possible destinations that are kind of in common for a lot of people. Things that, that I see that people are headed toward or valuing or kind of programming their life towards. And, and you and God kind of evaluate your life uh, for where it's really headed. One of the destinations that people program their life towards is success. People want to be successful, so they build a business, they make some money, they achieve recognition, they gain some fame. That they get a good reputation, they get the acclaim of men, and that's what they focus their life on, their standing in that community. Uh, success can be addictive, because the more you get, the more you want. And the danger is living on an ever-increasing treadmill that never seems to have an exit ramp. So maybe your life is headed towards success. Maybe your life is programmed for financial security. And there's a lot of people who go, hey, i got to store up treasure on earth. i got to have enough, enough to retire, enough to relax, enough to, to you know, be comfortable with so that I don't have to worry about anything. And of course, you know, Jesus said, don't store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. And uh, we also have those realities like 2008 when the crash happened and a lot of people who thought they had enough suddenly didn't have enough. Uh, but a lot of people want that destination of financial security. A lot of people program their life for family. They go, hey, I want to have a great family. I want to I, I have, you know, uh, these wonderful kids, and we're going to have all these perfect experiences together. We're going to have the idyllic childhood, and they're going to be involved in everything, and I'm going to be there every moment, and I'm going to take them on these wonderful trips and vacations and, and holidays. And, and that is great, but uh, remember Jesus said, uh, if anyone loves son or daughter more than me, they're not worthy of me. And that, and there's that whole thing about they grow up and move away, right? They leave the empty, they leave you behind. And at some point, if you poured your whole life into your kids, they're gone, and and you're staring at the person across the table from you, like, who are you? Why are we living together? Some people program their life for entertainment, for fun. You know, they just want to enjoy life, indulge self, throw great parties, take awesome trips, have the coolest toys. And, 
and, and you know, they have a, a good time. Maybe they're a party looking for a place to happen, but life is never truly joyful when it's all about you. And some people program their life. Their destination that they're heading for is honoring God. They recognize Jesus as Savior. You live to please Him, to serve Him, to honor Him in all your words and all your deeds. Honestly, between you and God, what has been the purpose, the direction, the destination your life has pointed to? Uh, this is a question you, you may be able to answer simply or it may haunt you all week long. It doesn't matter because we've got to figure that out if we want to be intentional about where we're headed. We need to be aware and we need to understand our purpose. So let's talk about what were you designed for. What were you designed for? Uh, allow me to be obvious. You exist. Did it catch any of you by surprise? I didn't think so. And you exist for a reason, a purpose. You're here for a purpose, and our frustration often lies in not knowing what our purpose is. So we expend energy pursuing all kinds of purposes that we were not created for. Sort of like using something as a hammer that is not a hammer. Any of you ever done this? Yeah, my wife is an expert at this. Marada will, will, I've seen her use all kinds of things for a hammer. I've seen her use like a tape dispenser. I've seen her use a stapler, scissors, a rock. And I'll go, honey, these are not hammers. We have hammers out there. I know, it's just easier to use it. But it's not a hammer. It's not the purpose it was created for. And a lot of us are, are doing that too. We're, we're struggling through. And, and we need to understand our design. And if we're going to understand our design, we need to consult our designer. It begins by knowing that you were born by God's purpose. You were born by God's purpose. In, in the Gospel of John, first chapter, at the very beginning, verses 12 and 13, John writes, But to all who did receive Jesus, even to those who believed on his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor the will of flesh, nor the will of man, but born of God. Born of God. I want you to think about this. If you're a follower of Jesus Christ, if you believe that Jesus is the one and only Son of God and Savior of the world, and you believe that he died on the cross to pay for your sins, and that he was raised from the dead, and you have made a commitment to follow Jesus Christ, then you were born into the kingdom of God and into the family of God because of God. Let that sink in just for a minute. You are not a mistake. You are not unwanted. You are not insignificant. You are not unimportant. God birthed you spiritually, intentionally, purposefully. And, and what that means for us is that every single one of us who's a follower of Jesus Christ belongs to God, and God delights in you. God delights in you. Now, he doesn't delight in all the choices that we make any more than those of us as parents delight in all the choices that our children make. He doesn't delight in the rebellion that's in our hearts. He doesn't delight in all the thoughts that we think. But God delights in you as a person, as his child. He delights in you. Because you were born by God's purpose and you were created, you were designed for God's purpose. You were created for God's purpose. Ephesians chapter 2, I know, you guys marked it a long time ago, you have to wake up your device now to find it again. Verses 8 through 10 is what I want to look at. And, and if you're somebody who marks things in your Bible, if you're somebody who writes down verses and posts some places and memorizes them, these are worth memorizing. These are full of truth that is life-changing. Listen to what the Apostle Paul writes to the church. In other words, he was writing to Christians like us. Paul says, For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing, it's the gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Now, just, just let this wash over you for a minute. First of all, we're saved 
because of grace. Not because of the stuff that we've done, not because of the stuff that we do, not because we're good people. We're saved because Jesus died on the cross, and when he died on the cross, he paid for your sins and my sins and, and covered all of our sins, and, and, that, and God gave us that salvation as a gift. And the moment you confess Jesus as Lord, then all those sins are forgiven, and all your life is made new because of the gift of God. Not because you're a wonderful person, not because you're awesome at what you do, not because you're, you're so generous or so kind or, or do all these things. It's a gift that God's given to you. Again, you were born by God's purpose. And then he says this. And then you're God's workmanship. Workmanship. Now, I confess to you that I am not a craftsman of any kind with these instruments at the end of my arms. Okay? They're pretty much useless uh, other than for, like, feeding myself and driving a car. Uh, there's really not a whole lot of other things they're good for, but I know that in this room... There are some of you that are craftsmen. I mean, you, there's some of you in this room that can take a piece of wood that just looks like a piece of wood, and you can make really cool stuff out of it, things that people can use, things that people can put on their walls, things that are decorative and beautiful and awesome, and people go, wow, look at that. And, and there's some of you in this room that can, that can take fabric or take scraps of, of material and turn them into beautiful objects that people can use and cover up on cold days like today. And... Uh, and, and, and people look at that, and, and you're, you're, you're a craftsman. There's some of you in this room that have taken, you know, pieces and put them together and made classic cars that, you know, you're so proud of. You drive down on Main Street and show them off and go to car shows and show them off, and people go, wow, look at that. I wish I had a car like that. You see, if you're a craftsman, you, you kind of take pride in your work, don't you? You, you kind of like to show it off. You kind of like people to say, that's really beautiful. That's really cool. Well, guess what? We're craftsmen, and, and we're not perfect, and, and we're flawed, and all of our stuff, no matter how cool it is, has some flaws in it. But God is perfect, and he's a craftsman who doesn't make mistakes, and you are his workmanship. You're his workmanship. You know what that means? That means that God thinks you're beautiful. God thinks you're awesome. God thinks you're wonderful. God thinks you're incredible because he made you, and he made you for a purpose. So you're wonderful, you're beautiful, you're purposeful. You were designed to accomplish tasks that are uniquely for you. They're not generic, they're not menial, they're not unimportant. That, that God has these things that he designed for you to accomplish in this world that are just for you. I think that's pretty awesome. I think that's incredible. In other words, God created you to make a, a world-changing impact. A life-changing impact in this world. You have a part to play in his kingdom and in his family. Now, understand, you don't need a title. You don't need a title like pastor or teacher or deacon. You don't need, you know, some incredible skill that can be on display like, you know, the musicians up here doing stuff that, you know, I can't do. You don't need a theological education for God to use you. God already created you, designed you, and, and made you wonderful, and made you purposeful. You are God's masterpiece. You are valued, and you have a role to play in God's kingdom. That's what you were designed for. And that demands the next question. Will you live on purpose? Will you live on purpose? If you're a follower of Jesus Christ, you've already embraced God's purpose in the big picture. You've already said, Jesus, you're my Lord. You've forgiven my sins. You're going to take me to heaven when I die. I'm yours. But will you live for purpose each day? Each day, will you make the choices to, to live a purpose-driven life? You see, we're inviting you and encouraging you to step into purpose. We, we're, we want you to evaluate your life kind of figure out where you're headed, and make course corrections as needed. It may be a little bit, it may be a lot. But that's what we're encouraging you to do and saying, hey, look, all of us have a purpose. We want you to live in that purpose. And to help you do that, uh, we're doing this series called Purpose Driven Life. And so there's three challenges I want to make for all of you to consider. The first one is this. For the next six weeks, attend our services. And if you can't make it because you're sick or because you're traveling, then watch them online. Why? Because we're talking about the purpose, and, and we're going to be going through this and give you a chance to evaluate and kind of help, you know, uh, 
correct your life, set your life on the course that you want it to be on. So uh, we're going to ask you to show up. Uh, and then we're going to ask you to read the Purpose Driven Life book. It, it's, a, it's, a, it's kind of a big book, but it's a 40-day devotion. And you're right, some of you are going, ah, that's a lot. I don't know that I can read a book. Because some of you, I know, you haven't read a book since high school, and that was, may have been a while ago. But that's okay. Yeah, here's the thing. It's, it's just a couple of pages each day. Uh, it'll take you about 10, 15 minutes max uh, to read it. You know, if you're a couple or a family, you could even read it out loud together uh, and talk about it. But, but read the book. And some of you are going, but I don't want to work at reading the book. That means like 40 days, i got to give up 15 minutes. Who has 15 minutes? Yeah, see, you know what we want? We all want change to happen instantly, right? We all want it to go, we go, okay, God, make me a new person and change me and do it right now. And we want God to snap his fingers, and we're like, you know, <laughs> 20 pounds lighter, and, uh, and we've got patience, and uh, we're just like this whole new person. It doesn't work that way. It really doesn't work that way. You know, Jesus kind of said, if you're going to follow me, you need to deny yourself, take up your cross daily, and follow me. Which means that maybe in that self-denial, it, it means that you actually have to spend 15 minutes intentionally reading a devotion that's going to help you evaluate your life. And, uh, and I just want to challenge you to do that. Make a commitment. The next 40 days, you're, you're going to prioritize that. You know, and, and, and here's the thing. Some of you are going like, well, I don't have the book. We're giving them away. <laughs> See, we're going to remove the obstacles. Now, I'm just going to tell you, we're going to run out because uh, uh, people are like going, okay, I'm going to do this. So, because um, yeah, we, you know, ordered a bunch of books and we gave those away. And we ordered more and we're going to give those away. Uh, but that's okay because we'll order more books. But, uh, but we want you to do this. So, so we're giving them away. So on your way out today, stop by and see if you, there's still books available. Stop by the Connection Center. Stop by the, the sign-up place for the, the life groups because we want you to read the book. We want God to change your life. And if you put the effort into it, God will start changing you because he'll meet you there. Third thing, not only do we want you to attend and read the book, but we want you to join a life group, purpose-driven life group. Uh, we've got life groups meeting all different kinds of times, and, uh, and you can stop by the table on your way out. It's right out the front doors to the right, and say, hey, when's a group that I can meet in? Because we've got groups meeting in homes, and, and some of you are like, yeah, that's what I want. A small group, you know, just, you know, eight or ten people, and we can read and we talk about the book. That'll be great. Some of you are going like, I, I, that would freak me out. I couldn't do that. Great. We've got a group Thursday nights. meets right here, 6 o'clock. You can come be a part of it. Stop by, sign up, let them know you're coming. Uh, we just want you to participate. Again, why? Because we know that as you pour yourself into this, God will meet you there and he will change your life. He will do significant work on your soul. And, and, and if you choose to pursue God's purpose, it will change you. Some of you are going, how's it going to change me? Well, let me tell you what living on purpose does. Living on purpose results in meaning in life. Meaning in life. Great thing about following Jesus is you always have a purpose. You always have a reason for being. And since we live in a world that's awash with purposelessness, we already talked about this, or empty purposes, this is significant. If you've ever wondered, is this all there is? This study is for you. Following Jesus, pouring yourself into Jesus is going to bring meaning into your life. If you've... Uh, Maybe you're young, and you're hungry, and you're ambitious, and you're like, yes, I want to succeed in life, and, and yet you don't want to spend years or decades headed for the wrong destination. Jesus offers meaning and perspective. Living on purpose results in meaning in life. It also results in significance. Significance. Uh, have you noticed that people are trying to find significance in all kinds of crazy ways in this world? You know, people want their 15 minutes of fame. They, they, people, you know, will do insane things and post them on YouTube just so people will notice them because they're trying to find that place that makes them feel significant. Uh, people want to know that, that they want other people to know that they're here and they matter. Uh, people pour themselves into relationships. They're looking for significance. And, and by the way, if you're looking for significance in a relationship, all you're going to do is crush that other person because they weren't made to provide significance for you. The only person you're going to find significance in is Jesus. 
He's the one who's going to bring significance to your life. First of all, understand that you are significant because God created you and God loves you. Hear that again. You're significant because God created you and because God loves you. That's what gives us value. It's not the external things. It's the internal reality of who God is and how he loves us. And you're going to find significance in loving God and fulfilling your purpose. By the way, loving God is your first purpose. Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind and strength. This is the first and great commandment. The second is like it. What? Love your neighbor as yourself. You see, as you grow in your love relationship with Jesus, he enables you to love others. He teaches us how to love others. And, and, and as we love others, it changes the dynamic of relationships and the significance fills our life because we become a blessing to others and others bless us back and, and the significance just grows and we feel valued not just because God loves us but because other people matter. It's a tremendous dynamic. And for those of you that are tempted to really make family the, the destination of your life, you want to have a great family, you want to have the greatest family, love God more than you love your family. Because when you love God more than you love your family, then God gives you the ability to love your family better than you could if you made them first. Significance is one of the things that happens as we pursue God's purpose. And, and then satisfaction. Satisfaction is one of those results of a life lived on purpose. You see, all of us want joy. I don't know if you may be the happiest person in this room, but you still want joy in your life. I don't know anybody who wants less joy. We all want contentment. We want to get to that place where the tensions on the inside are relaxed. We want peace. You can tell that because of all the, the meds we use to try and get peace. It, well, here's the thing. All of those things that we want are byproducts of pursuing Jesus. If, if you make it your life goal to find joy, to be happy, because it's your you know, constitutional right to pursue happiness, you, you're going to only grasp it like you do grasping water. It's going to be there, and then it's going to be gone. It's going to be temporary. It's going to be fleeting. The, the real lifelong joy is found in pursuing Jesus, living for Christ. Same was true with contentment and with peace. If we pursue them, we'll never attain them, but if you pursue Jesus you'll be surprised at how they show up in your life. You see, the destination that we all want to get to is a life of purpose and joy. That when we meet Jesus face to face, we hear, well done, good and faithful servant. Over the next few weeks, we're going to talk together about how to get there. We're going to clarify the direction. We're going to encourage you to go there. But you have to decide if this is the destination that you want. And then you have to program your life to get there. Because it won't happen unless you decide to pursue God. Let's pray together.